Hey y'all, out here at the Pigeon Forge Ride Run, and uh, man, what a what a day. It's just been awesome. And uh, if you've been to the Ride Run before, the location's changed, and it's a whole new world out here. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it was great before, but it's even better now. And then to add to that, um, there is a 66 Cornet that I've been chasing for about two years. And uh, Lynn's the owner of it, bless his heart. I know he's tried to give me opportunities to shoot it, but it's just never worked out. And uh, so we're gonna stay in here a little late tonight and uh, get a video on it. So let me get the camera turned around, and we'll take a look at it. Lynn, tell me a little bit about this hot rod. Well, I always wanted a B-body convertible. Uh, I had a school teacher in 1966 bring one home. First ride in that car, uh, I changed my uh, emphasis in life from being uh, wanting to be Daniel Boone to wanting to be Richard Petty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, took a long time to find the car and get the resources to build the car, of course and uh, just happened to get a 66 Coronet because that's what was available. Later, I found that a 66 Coronet convertible was the first 426 Street Hemi allowed to the press fleet. Eric Dalquist actually did the article in December of 65 Hot Rod Magazine. Uh, it was also interesting as I began to research that there were only three convertible 426 Hemi Coronets built in 1966. Huh, this isn't one of those three. No, this is not one of those three. Uh, those cars are in the high end dollar wise. I would think, but this one, I don't think you, you I mean, you wouldn't take 15 grand for this, would you? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> probably wouldn't take 15 grand for the motor. I don't think you take, a, I don't know if you'd take 150 grand, but I don't know if you'd take 10 times that for it. I mean, it's just a beautiful car, brother. How long, uh, have you been a Mopar fan all your life? Pretty much since 1966. Right. Like yeah. you fell in love with when you saw it. Yes. Same teacher that had the 66 convertible satellite then went on to buy a 68 convertible GTX and a 69 convertible GTX. By 1969, I was pretty much hooked as a Mopar. They just fan. kept tormenting you, didn't they? They certainly Brand did. Brand new and they kept rolling it out. They certainly did. And you, it, this doesn't have anything to do with his car, folks, but he tells a funny story about, as a kid, tell people how crazy you were about that, the lady that dropped off the, the kids in the plum. Oh. <laughs> well, being a Mopar fan early on, in 1970, I was in the eighth grade and moved to a new school. And there was a woman there that had a plum crazy 426 Hemi Challenger. And she had two little girls, and I would go to school early so that I could watch this whole process. She would get in the line with the other parents, and of course the 426 Hemi had a big cam and headers. Her husband had tried to work on it, and it would stall out, and that would just make her mad. And she'd crank that thing up, and when it would fire, she'd clear the carburetors out, and of course it'd just roar, and all the teachers would look at her ugly <laughs> and make comments about her. And when she finally let the little girls off and got out on the street, she'd always let it loose right. because she was mad and frustrated right, right. at the car. I went early every, every single day, day to you see You look that. forward to the torment that lady was going through. It Absolutely. made you smile. I wanted to be tormented that way. Brother, is that, I mean, you replaced the interior when you redid it and everything. Yes, that's we cool. did. But, that's, <clears throat> but it went back to close to stock or what would have been stock. Yes. The car is actually a Coronet 440, which had a little plainer interior. This interior is from a Coronet 500. The pleated seats, the console, those were all Coronet 500 items. Okay. And... I took the liberty of upgrading it. Well, you're making a clone, you might as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, dude, it just, man, it's beautiful. Who did the work? Well, the car was actually assembled in my basement. <laughs> now, I didn't paint the car, Yeah. but when I brought the car home in 2010 to my basement, I put it on jack stands and began to assemble it from there. I had pre-built the engine, the transmission, the rear end, uh, the heater box and the dash while it was uh, the body was off to be painted and so I began assembling it there and uh, came to this show with it for the first time in 2012 in, in uh, March that year. How long has the car been done? Well, uh, it's right at two years right two now. Years. It's been in some magazine, Muscle Machines? Yes, uh, it has, uh, Muscle Machines. Mopar Muscle? Mopar Muscle. 
Uh, Chrome Insurance, which is the insurer of the car, uh, asked me last year to present some photographs to be in their uh, calendar for 2014, and we actually made it in the August edition. Sweet. Did they give you a discount on your insurance? Uh, no, no, they didn't, as a matter of fact. They I sent you a bill. That. You sent yeah. them pictures, and they sent you a bill. Interestingly enough, Scotty, right? we attended the uh, Street Machine National South here in Knoxville right. last May. <clears throat> And unbeknownst to us until this weekend, uh, they also photographed our car and put it in their latest issue that just came out this last week. Man, this uh, car's good. This car's just gorgeous, though. And I mean, I can't imagine they were ever this cool. I know you'll argue with me because you just fell in love with them. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not the Mopar guy that you are. And I've never. I don't. I, there's not one out there that. How long has it been? Two years. I've been a year and a half. I've been chasing you for this yeah. car. Well, you came to me when I first brought it out yeah. here in the spring of 2012. So that's two years. Yeah, two years. But man, I saw it. I saw it out there to, at the uh, Pigeon Forge Rod Run, and I was just like, man, alive. It is perfect. But you got your hands dirty on it too. Oh yeah, very much so. Who did your paint work? Well, he asked not to be disclosed because he doesn't like to paint cars, but he's okay. obviously very good at yes. it. What happened is I built a blown uh, uh, Hemi for his dad's 32 Ford, and they paid me back by painting my car. Oh, a nice trade-out. I couldn't have afforded to pay, you know, to pay him. Right, to paint right. Well, Lynn, it's beautiful, brother. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I know, and you haven't been running from me. It's just been a timing issue. One time we got caught by weather. I don't want people to think that Lynn was snubbing me or running from me, because that wasn't the case. It's just a timing issue. But this is one that I put the time in to chase down, folks, because I just had to show you. I mean, how gorgeous is that car? 66 Coronet, 426. They actually made three of them, but you're seeing a clone. But man, it's just, you did it right. Thank you, sir. You Scott. rocked it. You rocked it, brother. Thank you very much. Folks, there you go. One beautiful 66 Coronet 426 convertible from the Pigeon Forge Ride Run 2014. Hope you all have enjoyed it. See ya.